Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagan Maradian here at the West 2018 Conference, uh, largest maritime conference and trade show on the West Coast of the United States, a partnership between the Armed Forces Communications and Electronics Association, which is now known as AFSIA International, as well as the United States Naval Institute. And we're honored to have with us Hondo Gertz, uh, who is the Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and uh, Acquisition. Hondo, uh, great comments today uh, to this uh, audience. Uh, you're now a couple of months on the job. We saw you uh, at Surface Navy Association, and you had a fascinating message today about how two of the priority programs of the four sort of priority areas the Navy has right now, the MQ-25 Stingray, uh, the SM-6 uh, ballistic, um, uh, anti-ballistic missile uh, capability, C4ISR, and then the long-range uh, strike missile as well. Talk to us about how you accelerate. You, know, you talked about a three-year acceleration on MQ-25, as well as a dramatic acceleration on the SM-6. Talk to us specifically how you manage to accelerate those programs. Yeah, so, you know, Congress has given us lots of great authorities um, to create these kind of agile acquisition programs. And that, they're not the biggest programs in the world, but they're very, you know, important programs. And so we're taking advantage of those authorities now. And, and part of it is streamlining our requirements process, part of it is streamlining acquisition process. And a lot of it is just empowering a team so giving them access to senior decision makers so we can make decisions quickly and then letting them go run is really kind of showing us that there is this middle tier of acquisition that, that we can get great capability quickly out to the fleet. And, and I think these are being good pathfinders for us. And But what are some of the specific things that you guys did to do that, right? Whether on the process side or on the acquisition board side of things. Sure, so like on the MQ-25, we reduced down to two critical performance parameters. Right, and so really focus on what is the game-changing kind of requirement. So, so reform in the requirements area can be a key thing. Um, it can be on the funding element. So how do we quickly move funding to those programs? And a lot of it is ingenuity. So there was a good idea out there. Somebody said, hey, you've got this existing inventory weapon in a standard missile. Here's some things we could do rather quickly. Uh, and then we said, yeah, great, let's go. We're not going to study it forever. Let's quickly prototype it up, and then if it works, we can get it into the fleet. And so I think a lot of it is just opening up the ability for folks, folks know what needs to be done to accelerate the process. We've just got to have a culture that allows them to go off and run uh, and, and show us what's really in the art of the possible. Uh, and I should have also said that on SM6, you're also looking for the sea strike capability, not just the airstrike, so that it becomes a true multi-purpose weapon in the magazine of every every ship that's out in the force that can shoot uh, from a VLS tube from a Mark 41. Uh, talk to us a little bit uh, about Softworks. Uh, there was a great question from one of the other reporters, but also others in the audience, that talked about you know the process you set up. Uh, over at SOCOM. Talk to us a little bit about what that was. The Air Force has now followed suit, and the question was whether the Navy is going to follow suit. Talk to us about what you see as the merits or potential pitfalls. You know, what, what's next? Is there going to be a NavWorks, for example, out there? Uh, so, sure. So, software's the whole idea was how do I make it easier for ideas to get to the command? And my sense when I was down as a SOCOM acquisition executive was uh, because of bureaucracy, because of just the way we've done business, over time it was getting harder and harder for ideas to get together. And then we also didn't really have a place where the operator, the acquisition, the technologist, and the college intern, where we could bring everybody together to look at hard problems maybe in a new way. And so for SOCOM, that was a useful model. I think the Air Force uh, is following suit. Uh, I certainly know the Navy, you know, in my, my view, the Navy needs to have that capability. I think the Navy actually has a little bit of a leg up because they kept a lot of their organic engineering talent, whereas the other services divested some of it in the warfare centers. And so those warfare centers already have a robust intern program. They already have kind of um, communities of practice where we can bring fleet folks in. Uh, so, so one is, hey, let's look at what we have before we invent something new. And, and, and the key to SoftWorks, any of those places, is how do you network it together, right? So you don't create another cylinder of excellence. You create something that's additive. So my first goal is let, look across the Navy Let's, let's make sure we're fully utilizing what we already have. Uh, and then, you know, whether we link in by putting some Navy folks at Softworks or create a Navy Works or Saltworks or whatever it is, um, then we'll, we'll decide if we need to augment what we actually have. From a messaging standpoint, uh, equating Navy acquisition with being in a salt works might not be the best way to do that. Uh, but I'll let I'll let Danny uh, field you some know, of the. You know, one advantage we also have is O and R, right? And they've for years done a really good job. I mean, they have O and R Global, so they have already a pretty effective outreach program. 
Uh, and so again, how, to me in the Navy, it's not as much we have to create something new as how do we make better use of the assets we have uh, and make sure we've got the places where if you have an idea, you can walk in the door. Um, one of the things you uh, talked about both on the podium but also with reporters here was uh, Beamer uh, is uh, the, the uh, battle space exploitation uh, mixed re for mixed reality uh, program. We talked to Heidi uh, Buck over there yesterday about how this technology can also help on from repair. You know, as you said, right now when ships go into the yard, there are guys with rolls of paper, uh, diagrams and designs. You can augment that reality. You can do laser mapping of compartments and spaces so that you can more efficiently and quickly do the work. You talked about a visit to a shipyard where, for example, laser technology is being applied. Newport News is taking dramatic, reducing dramatically the cost of the John F. Kennedy that's in build right now, which is the follow-on to uh, the, the next ship in the Ford class. Um, and you also mentioned the DDG-51, the Burke mm -hmm. Flight 3 contract that just went out where you're doing a multi-year, you're more clear about requirements, you know what that ship wants to be so that folks can bid on it. I want to ask you kind of a bigger question. Um, each one of these programs is gigantic, involved tremendous amount of requirements. You talked about paring down on the, on the Stingray contract. Do you need to have a major offsite with your shipbuilders particularly and go off, take a look at what the threat profiles are given a new generation of far more deadly weaponry, for example, uh, and sort of reinvent what you want and how you want them to build these ships. A lot of the way they build them, they are the best and most robust ships in the world, but it also, there's a large carrying cost for that. Are you looking at having this kind of a conference, getting the shipbuilders in a room and figuring out perhaps all of the bigger muscle movements and more thoughtful sort of revolutionary changes you might be able to adopt in order to be able to more rapidly produce these ships and, and, and more economically produce them. Yeah, sure. So I, I haven't thought of one big offsite um, as much as sitting down with each of the yards. So I'll be at it, I'll be at all the new build yards here within the next week. Uh, and, and I think the real issue is um, making sure we've got things synchronized. They understand our requirements. So the better we can, and hopefully though, as you see the 19 budget when it comes out, Better give them a solid forecast of what's coming and show them the path of the future. They can make uh, really uh, sound decisions that enable us to go fast. If you're watching what a lot of them are doing with their CapEx programs and investing, and we've got Columbia coming up and all that. Uh, so we've got these new programs. I'm seeing them kind of clean sheeting, thinking how we're building programs. The challenge with the in-fleet work is how do you do that in process? Uh, but there are some pretty interesting uh, opportunities to even laser scan existing ships. So you're, you don't have a, a full digital model, but you've got to start. And then I would say AI and machine learning have another great opportunity for us, and that's how do we more rapidly train. And how do you use AI in synthetic environments to either more rapidly train new ship workers as we're building, you know, we're, we've got to bring in a large uh, new set of labor force in these yards, both public and private, as well as as we bring new sailors on ships. AI and machine learning and virtual reality can really have a huge benefit just on training itself and really you know, allow you to do many more repetitions, get your, uh, get your expertise up much more quickly than just learning by doing as your kind of sole training mechanism. So I think there's another area where there's a great opportunity for us. Hondo, thanks very much. We really, right, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, one, one, one more question. Hold uh -oh. on, because, because by the time this airs, one more question, because by the time this airs, the budget will be out. Um, what do you think are going, what, what are the things you're most proud about this budget? What are the key elements of it from your standpoint that, that stand out and you worked hard to get included in this budget with the entire Navy team? So, so I would say, um, I think what's really, really important right now is we have a national defense strategy that clearly lays out our priorities, uh, where we're going to invest, uh, the kind of force we want to build, and the environment as we see it, and really get us back into thinking about being able to compete, uh, defer, and then uh, uh, deter, and then win, right? So with that mindset of compete, uh, deter, and win, I think that will reshape all of our thinking. I think when you see the budget, you'll see that uh, initial tranche in the budget, and, uh, and then our job over the next coming years is then how do we continue to change the trajectory to really put us in that position to, uh, to be competitive, be able to fight the nation's wars and win, and then through strength deter future conflicts. Hondo, thanks so much. We really appreciate it. Always enjoy talking to you. All right, Brian. Good to see you again.